So right before we get into this video, I'm sure you're all excited because you see this 5x5. But uh, right before we get into it, I just want to say that this is a very comprehensive guide about the 5x5 last two edges. So if you only want to see the algorithms for each case, please refer to the timestamps in the description and you'll find them. Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. And in today's video, I'm going to be showing you all of the 5x5 last two edge algorithms that you need to know. So let's get right into it. So the last two edges on 5x5 is the final step of edge pairing when you have only, well, let me set something up. When you have only two edges left to pair and all the other edges are done, you're done with pairing. So the prerequisite to, you know, follow along with this video is you should know the 5x5, um, the reduction method on 5x5. So um, yeah, this is like the last step where you need to finish off edge pairing and move to your 3x3 stage. So there are about um, 12 odd cases that you can get for la the last two edges and most people just learn the parity algorithm and how to flip an edge. But uh, today I'm going to show you all the possible cases and um, I guarantee that once you finish learning these cases, you will definitely get faster at that, that step of 5x5. It is a bit uh, tough to get used to in this in the beginning and it's tough to be motivated to like, keep going with it. But I guarantee that if you stick to it and you actually get all the algorithms down, you'll see a great improvement in the long run. Let's get into this first by understanding that, that there are two types of last two edge cases. Number, number one is the parity cases and number two is the no parity cases. So obviously I'm going to start with number two, which is the no parity cases, which are slightly more easier to understand and um, sort of conceptualize on your own. So let's get right into this. So for the no parity cases, the first thing you need to know is how you flip an edge or how you replace something and then flip it. And when you replace it back, you solve both edges. So this is a great case where I have a solid block here, right? Of red, blue edges. And I have the red, green edge here, here and here, uh, the edges and the last red, blue edge here. So I need to get this here as well as get this here while flipping these. So the best way to do this is regardless of what angle you're holding it at, you move this here. So now when you've moved this here, you've sort of paired these up to make a block and you've displaced the single edge pieces like this. So when you do this algorithm to flip an edge, which is R U R prime F R prime F prime R. Now you can do this algorithm multiple ways. Like for example, you could do R prime F R F prime R U prime R prime as well, but it's totally up to you. Um, it depends for me. It usually depends on how my grip is at that particular step step. But yeah, here's how it goes. R U R prime F R prime F prime R and then U. So what that did is it solved both of those edges. And the way it did that is it made this block. And now when I flip this entire thing, this red blue will come here and get ready to go back there. And these red greens will come down here and will get ready to be paired with this like that. So that's how it works. And now without any further ado, let's get into the main part of this video. We're starting off with the no parity cases and there are four total cases. Just for reference throughout this video, I'll be showing all the cases in this orientation with the last two edges here and here. So yeah, this is the first case where I have a block here and the flipped thing here. That's how you recognize this case. And it is this, this is the most simple case that you can get. And this is what I just showed you basically. So you, the algorithm to solve this case is very simple. It's wide R prime to pair this. And then you do the exact same edge flip algorithm, but you set it up like this with a U prime. So once you do this, you can do R U R prime F R prime F prime R. And then when you replace it, both your edges are solved. So again, you have this flipped and this here and this here with a solid block here and this needs to go there. So wide R prime U prime R U R prime F R prime F prime R and wide R. So yeah, that's the first case. Moving on to the second one. So this is the second case and it's identical to the first case, except it's mirrored onto the front and back faces. So here the block is here and the corresponding edge is here. And here you have the thing that doesn't match, the pair that doesn't match and the edge is here. So what you do in this case, so if you get it from here, you can use your left moves or you can just do an L and then the exact same algorithm. So U prime and edge flip. But if you get it from this angle, you can just do a wide L or it's basically doing a rotation and an R. So the algorithm would be wide L U prime R U R prime F R prime F prime R 
and wide L prime or just R prime. That's up to you. Because it's the last two edges, so it doesn't matter which one you do. So uh, yeah, going over that again. <clears throat> you have the block here with the corresponding edge here, and these don't align. So R U prime, or if that's if it's in this angle. So if it's here, you do wide L U prime R U R prime F R prime F prime R wide L prime. So that's very simple. So both of these are very intuitive cases so far. All you have to know is the edge flipping algorithm. So now moving on to the third case. So this is the third case. And as you can see, we have red, blue, red, blue here, and the last red, blue here, and the green reds are here and the last red greens here. So basically the middle pieces have sort of traded positions and they sort of match with the color. So what I mean by match with the color is here, red and blue in both these red, blue edges, red faces up. And in the last red, blue edge, red faces up as well with respect to the space. The same with the red greens. So when you get a case where all the edges, where the opposite, like the middle edge of this pair faces up and vice versa for the other, it's a no parity case. So this can be solved without parity by doing two edge flip algorithms and then flipping here. But there's a faster way to do it. And that is by using this algorithm, which is very simple and very useful. So the algorithm goes like this. Wide R2 prime F2 u2 prime wide r2 prime u2 prime f2 wide r2 pretty simple right so this algorithm is actually very useful because a lot of people even i used to do this a lot like flip once and then flip again but instead of that you can now recognize it by seeing that these opposite edges all face up and the same with this case so it's a no parity case then you can do R2, F2, U2, R2, U2, F2, R2. Very simple to remember as well. Moving on to the final case. So this is the final case in the no parity cases where you have completely flipped edge here and a completely flipped edge here. So that's the way you recognize this and it is not parity. Parity is when you have only one completely flipped edge in that two of them will match and the other one doesn't. So here, as you can see, the outer edges match, but the inner one is flipped with respect to the outer ones at the right position. So if you can guess what to do here, pause the video and try figuring it out, figuring it out on your own. It is not tough. So um, I'm assuming you tried it yourself, but if you haven't and you just want to see how it's done, here's how it's done. So basically what you need to do is you need to move this here and then flip there so that you flip these two in the process as well as this. And once you flip back, this will be flipped. So it will be solved and these will be flipped. So this will come back solved. That's the idea behind this. And the way you execute it is like this. So you do well, sort of an M prime. If I could call it that it's like wide R and R prime U prime, then just do the edge flip algorithm. R U R prime F R prime F prime R and M. So that's the way you solve it quite intuitive. Now that we're done with all the parity cases, let's go, sorry, all the no parity cases, let's move on to the parity cases. This is the first parity case and there are eight in total. Now the first case is literally parity. Like it has, it's basically your last two edges case, but you have basically one edge left and it's just flipped. So the way you solve parity is by using this algorithm from this angle, R U2 X R U2 R U2 prime wide R prime U2 L U2 wide sorry R prime U2 R U2 prime R prime U2 R prime. So it's it's quite a long algorithm, but you will get used to it once you learn it. It'll just come into your muscle memory. And yeah, once that happens, it's very, very simple. So again, it's R U2 X R U2 R U2 prime wide R prime U2 L U2 R prime U2 R U2 prime R prime U2 R prime. So that's the first case. Now we'll move on to the second one. So here's the second case. And here, what we observe is that you have a block here and the corresponding edge here, and you have a block here and the corresponding edge here. So the blocks are opposite like this and the edges are opposite like this. So if you move any one down, you see that it pairs. If you move this one down, you see that it pairs. So what do you do in this case? So the way you recognize that this is a parity case is by noticing that there's no flipped edge. So if this was flipped with respect to this, you could set this up here and then use an edge flip algorithm across this. 
but here it's not. So that's how you recognize this case. And I like to see it as this block and this, and the block is exactly like vertically opposite to it. And the algorithm you use for this, from this angle is this. R u2 r u2 prime x u2 r u2 prime y r prime u2 l u2 prime r2. So again, from this angle, r u2 r u2 prime x u2 r u2 prime r prime u2 l u2 prime r2. So that's the second case. Moving on to the third one. So here's the third case and as you can see again just like the second case we have a block here and the opposite edge here but here this edge is not here and this block is not here so this part of it is flipped around or whichever part you want to visualize. So basically the way you recognize this is that the block always ends up on the right no matter what orientation you hold it at so the block always ends up on the right and lone pieces on the left that's how you recognize this case and the algorithm you use to execute it is slightly complicated but this is how you do it. This is the algorithm for it. F2 R U2 R U2 prime R prime F2 R prime U2 R prime U2 prime R U2 R prime U2 prime R2. So again, the way you recognize is that the block always ends up on the right, and you do F2 R U2 R U2 prime R prime F2 R prime U2 R prime U2 prime R U2 R prime U2 prime R2. So that's the third case. Now we'll move on to the fourth one. So here's the fourth case, and here we have the block on the left, this lone piece here, and a block here and a lone piece here. And the way you recognize this case is that the block always ends up on the left. So it's the exact mirror of the previous case. If you're good at doing mirrors, you could try the F and L version of the previous algorithm. However, I recommend doing this version, which uses still still uses R and U moves, but you have a B2 instead of an F2. So you can picture it as doing it from here and L moves, but instead of doing it from here with F2 and L moves, we do it from here with B2 and R moves, if that makes sense. So here's the algorithm from this angle. B2, R prime, U2, R prime, U2 prime, R, B2, R, U2, R, U2 prime, R prime, U2, R, U2 prime, R2. So again, the block always ends up on the left and you do B2, R prime, U2, R prime, U2, R, B2, R, U2, R, U2, R prime, U2, R, U2, R2. So that's the fourth case. Now we move on to the fifth one. So now we move on to the fifth case and here we see you have this sort of block which is flipped here, a lone edge here, a block that's flipped here and a lone edge here. So if this reminds you of anything, it should remind you of the second case in this parity cases um, bracket. And here it's, it is exactly like the second case, except these are not fixed blocks, they're instead flipped blocks, right? So you have flipped here and flipped here, but they are vertically opposite to each other, these blocks, and the lone edges are as well. So that's how you recognize this case. And since these are flipped, unlike the previous ones, instead of holding the flipped one on the right, sorry, the, the block on the right, instead of holding the block on the right, we hold the block on the left. So we hold it from this angle and you do this algorithm. R prime U2, R U2 prime, wide L prime U2, R U2, R U2 prime, R prime U2, R U2 prime R2. So that pairs the edges. So again, So again, we hold the block of flipped edges on the left. Here it's on the right. So we hold the block of flipped edges on the left and we do R prime U2, R U2 prime, L prime U2, R U2 prime, R U2 prime, R prime U2, R U2, R2. That was the fifth case. And now we move on to the sixth one. So this is the sixth case and it looks awfully similar to the fifth one, except it's not, <laughs> obviously. So um, here, we have a block of flipped edges here, a lone edge here, but the opposite block is now here. So this should remind you of the third case of this uh, bracket, where these were fixed blocks basically. And now you'll notice that the block always ends up on the right. That's how you recognize this case. The block always ends up on the right. So this is a block of flipped edges, a block of flipped edges, and two lone edges here and here. So that's how you recognize this. And the way you execute it is like this. R, U2, R2, U2 prime, R prime U2, R U2 prime, R prime U2, R2 U2 prime, R. 
it's slightly tough to do the last r so i tend to do a wide l at the end to just like re grip to home grip but um, yeah that's how you do it uh, just showing you again so again the block of flipped edges always ends up on the right corresponding to the third case and you do r u2 r2 u2 r prime u2 r u2 r prime u2 r2 u2 r that's the sixth case moving on to the seventh one so this is the seventh case and here we have very similar to the fourth case where the blocks were always ending up on the left but here the blocks are flipped they're not fixed so you have a block of flipped edges here a lone edge here a lone edge here and a block of flipped edges here that always ends up on the left that's how you recognize this and the way you execute it is from this angle or like any angle cuz the block always ends up on the left you do this r prime u2 prime r2 u2 prime r u2 prime r prime u2 r u2 prime r2 u2 prime r prime so again the block of flipped edges always ends up on the left and you do r prime u2 prime r2 u2 r u2 r prime u2 r u2 r2 u2 r prime so that's the seventh one now moving on to the very last case so this is the very last case and this is a parity case even though it looks like your um like the third case in the no parity section i believe so in the third case of the no parity section you had two um edges here which matched up and two edges here which matched up however in that case the middle edge was also oriented the same way as these outer edges for both the edge pairs but in this case it's only oriented the same with one of them so what i mean by that is if i have red blue and red blue here the other red blue is does have red facing up however for the green red and green red this green red has red facing up while these have green facing up so that's how you recognize this case when you have the adjacent the outer edges are oriented and in fact solved but the like they like their counterpart the middle edge only one of them is oriented the other one isn't so that's how you recognize it and the way you hold this is with the oriented edge the oriented middle edge in the front so basically this is how i i like gen generally recognize it with these two and this this sort of shape and um yeah the oriented middle edge should face you then you do this algorithm r2 b2 r prime u2 r prime u2 prime x prime u2 r prime u2 r u2 r prime u2 prime r2 so again again we have red blue and red blue here which are the oriented pair so you hold the middle edge facing you because it's oriented and you do r2 b2 r prime u2 r prime u2 x prime u2 r prime u2 r u2 r prime u2 r2 and with that we wind up our entire discussion today about the last two edges on 5x5 so i hope this video was super helpful because it took me a long long time to get used to all of these algorithms so i don't you shouldn't expect yourself to get used to them like right off the off the bat but do use this video as a guide as a very comprehensive guide and as basically like a cheat sheet you know so whenever you you think you're forgetting the algorithm just come back to it and review the algorithm i leave all the time stamps for all the cases in the description so uh, you can review them at any time and uh, yeah i think that's all for this video so thanks a lot for watching and stay tuned a lot of content coming out bye